it is time for 6.3 properties of trig functions. We're going to get a little more into those trig functions. So if you're like, man, I, I'm struggling a little bit, hopefully today will help out. We're obviously going to go a little bit further with things, but um, it should help uh, rehash some of the old details. All right. A little warm up, a little review here. The central angle of a circle is 33 degrees. Ooh. Hmm. It's not a nice 30, 60, or 45. Um, and it has an arc length of 4.2 centimeters. Find the length of the radius of the circle. I'm going to draw a picture just because I kind of like uh, getting a visual rather than just always straight up like math. Um, so if I have a circle here, and what we're talking about is I have a central angle of 33 degrees, and my arc length, which would be this, is 4.2 centimeters. Okay. And what I want to know is what's my radius R. Okay, so I'm looking for, basically, it's, I know this portion of the circumference, right? Um, and I know the central angle. I should have put some uh, degree marking on there. Um, but I don't know what the radius is. So let's see here. Um, I know that we have uh, 33 out of the full 360 as far as the degrees are concerned of the circle, right? Um, and I have a portion of the circumference out of the entire circumference, which is 2 pi r. Well, will you look at that? The only variable I have is r. Awesome. I'm going to cross multiply. That's going to be 66 pi r equals 4.2. 4.2 times 360. The old trusty TI-84. I'm always strapped. Don't forget, guys. Yo, Ro. Okay. Yo, Ro. Only, wait, wait, wait till the end of round, right? You only round once. Um, so this is 1,512. And then I'm going to divide all of that by 66 pi. Now, here's a common mistake that happens. We plug in just divided by, we do this in our calculator. And we're like, well, I don't know why I keep getting the wrong answer. Uh, because, you know, what the heck, man? Um, well, here's what's happening is your calculator is dividing it by 66 and then multiplying by pi. So we got to put parentheses around that pi or that around the 66 pi to make sure it divides properly. And in which case I end up getting seven point. Um, it doesn't specify inside the problem. We had 4.2 centimeters. So I'm going to do the same rounding. So we'll say 7.3 centimeter radius. I like it. Good stuff. Excellent. Wonderful. Um, had it said three decimal places, it'd be 7.292 centimeters. That'd be three decimal places. Uh, but because this was one, I did one. Um, a lot of the stuff you'll do in calculus, AP calculus will be three decimal places. All righty. Quick review of the quadrants. All, all trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. Only sine and its reciprocal cosecant are positive in the second quadrant. Only tangent and its reciprocal cotangent are positive in the third. And only cosine and its reciprocal secant in the fourth. Okay. So with that information, let's do a little practice here. Name the quadrant in which sine of theta is less than zero, meaning sine is negative. Okay, so I'm talking about one of these two quadrants. And where cosine is negative, which I'm talking about one of these two quadrants. So where is that? Quadrant three. Whoop, whoop. Let's try another one. I'm going to go with uh, red. Sine is going to be positive, so it's in one or two. And tangent is going to be negative, which would mean either one of these. So quadrant two is going to be my quadrant that we're in. I feel like I should put a Q there. Q2 and Q3. And we'll do one last color change here. I'm going to go purple. All right. Where cosine is negative. Okay. So negative cosine would be here. And then cosecant, which is sine's reciprocal, is positive. So it follows the same as sine. So I end up with Q2. All right. I like it. I like it. Wonderful. Fantastic. I kind of like that uh, little visual approach there of saying where they are. You could also have written out, um, for example, in this last one, where cosine is negative would be in uh, quadrant two. 
in quadrant three. And then where um, cosecant is positive would have been one and two. And then you would see the ones that repeat the two and two for each one. That's what they have in common. Boom. That's where it is. So we have the same, same type of question here, but, well, I guess a little bit different question. Um, but now we're just wondering where the sine, cosine, tangent, whatever it might be of a particular angle of rotation, what quadrants is it going to be in? And also, um, is it positive or negative, right? Um, so let's do that. So I have 5 pi over 4. Well, that angle of rotation, that terminal side would end up being here in my third quadrant. And what do we know about sine in the third quadrant? I'm going to jot down my um, ASTC. Um, in the third quadrant, only tangent is positive, so that makes this one is going to be it's going to be Q three and negative. Cool. Tangent of negative pi over three. Negative pi over three is going to be in the fourth quadrant because it's going to rotate down pi over three. Tangent in that fourth quadrant is going to be negative. So Q four and then negative awesome sauce i'll go with that purple um cosine of pi over 11 again that's going to rotate all the way around almost a full 360 right we're, we're we're one pi over six off um but we're in the fourth quadrant so q four and what do i know about cosine in the fourth quadrant it's positive and again all of this is coming from the astc all students take calculus right so all of them are positive in the first. Sine is positive and it's reciprocal in the second. Tangent and cotangent are positive in the third. Cosine and secant are positive in the fourth. Awesome. Now we're going to evaluate with more than one revolution. My goodness, I barely got a handle on one revolution. How am I going to do more than one? Well, I'm going to be here to guide you. Don't you worry, okay? You're in a safe zone. All right, cosine of 390. Well, 390 is going to go... Uh, let's see here. Let's draw it out. It's going to go a full rotation and then another 30, right? So I'm going to deal with, that was kind of cool, this 30 degree reference, okay? Now, pending what you like to do, I'm personally, I'm a, I'm a triangle man, right? I'm a, I was, I've been an honors geometry teacher for forever. Um, so I know that this is going to be one. This is going to be root three. And this is going to be two. So cosine is adjacent. Root three over two, bingo, bango, done, right? We are doing cosine of 30 degrees. That's what I was calculating, all right? If you were doing the unit circle approach at 30 degrees, root three over two would be my X coordinate. That's my cosine, okay? Awesome. All right, I wrote down the uh, first quadrant of the unit circle. Uh, if you want to reference that, I would suggest if you're a unit circle person, always I like to jot that down personally just to look at it. Um, but you don't have to, but you can. Um, all right, next one is sine of negative 5 pi. So this is going to be a quadrantal, right? Now, if I were to draw this out and I go around, it's negative. So I go around once, that's negative 2 pi. Again, that's negative 4 pi. So I need to go one more. And it lands me there. So check this out. I think my eraser works like this. Boom. This is where I'm going to be at. Well, my order pair here is uh, negative 1, 0. And we know that sine is our y coordinate. So we're really doing sine of negative pi, which is going to be equal to 0. Raise the roof. Raise the roof. All right. Next one. 17 pi over 4. That's just obnoxious, don't you think? But hey, sometimes it's fun. Um, well, it's pi over 4, right? So I know that's going to be dealing with, and let me actually highlight this so I don't mix colors. That's going to be that ordered pair right there, right? That's what I'm dealing with if I'm a unit circle person. Um, or I know that I'm doing a 45, 45, 90 triangle if I'm a triangle person, okay? But let's first deal with where we're at in this rotation. So if I'm if I've got over four, that's uh, if I'm trying to figure out coterminal angles, that's eight pi over four. That's equivalent to two pi. So I subtract that. I'm gonna have to subtract that twice. So really, I'm subtracting sixteen pi over four. So I'm evaluating just regular old pi over four, right? If I subtract eight pi over four twice to get a co coterminal angle, that's within that um, 
zero to two pi range, I'm going to be at pi over four. Much more manageable now, right? So um, if I'm a special right triangle person, one, one, root two. So I know that that is going to be one over one, which is just one. If I'm a unit circle person, as we said, we were using that. And if I do y divided by x, anything divided by itself is 1. Or you could write it out as um, root 2 over 2 from your y times 2 over root 2. Everything is going to cancel. And again, we're still going to get 1 for our answer. All right. Lovely. A couple different ways of attacking it, right? Always good to have a few few different ways. I'm If I'm urging you know, any one way, when I'm starting to deal with um, tangents, tangent, cotangent, and then either my reciprocals, I like the um, the triangles because oftentimes with the uh, with those ones on the unit circle, we end up having to like rationalize a lot or like un unra ooh, that was a good voice crack unrationalize what we rationalize to be in the unit circle, and it gets kind of messy. Again, totally your choice. Alrighty, next one we got to use our little TI eighty four plus calculator or whichever one you have. Um, so here we got to approximate um, on your calculator, okay? Um, this is a, a callback to 6.2 that we didn't get to, but eh, whatever. Um, it's honestly not that big of a deal. Your, the, your biggest issue is going to be making sure that you're in the right mode, right? So for the first one, we have tangent of 213 degrees. Well, I want to make sure my mode is in degrees. Right now, I'm in radians. I remember messing this up all the time in high school. I'd be in the wrong mode. There's a good math meme with this one. If you're in radians, you're going to have a rad time. Um, all right, so now I'm in degrees. So I can just type in tangent 213. Okay, and if I uh, hit enter, I get 0.649. Okay, so 0.649. You can throw a zero in front if that makes you feel warm and cozy inside. All right, for secant. Well, secant is my reciprocal of cosine, right? Okay, so if I do 1 divided by the cosine, of 173. Now we're talking. Still in degree mode. We'll pop that in. One divided by cosine. Close the parens. All right, there we are. We have negative 1.008. Now I need to switch back into radian mode on my calculator. Don't want to mess that up. Um, boom. And then let's see here. We got pi over five, sine of pi over five. It is pronounced sine, right? Yep, it is pronounced sine, children. If you call it sin, I'll be very upset, you know? So don't do that. Don't be the sin cos tan crew, all right? It's sine, cosine, tangent. Um, we should be beyond that, though, right now. Okay, in pre-calc honors. PCH. All right, we got 0.5877, so 0.588. I'm doing my squiggly equals because it's approximation, right? I like me, those squiggly equals. Last one, cotangent. So that means I'm going to do 1 over 1 divided by tangent. I don't even need to write that down now because I'm, I'm getting the hang of this. I'm getting the hang of this. Now, I'm going to go with, um, ooh, actually, I don't have the fraction on here, I don't think. Alpha Y equals. Some of you guys, some of you cool kids with the fancier ones have the, nope, I don't. Bummer. Okay, some of you have the, the fraction, you don't, I don't. I'm going to do an extra set of parentheses, not that it really matters, but just to um, just to, to separate the numerator and denominator because I'm cool like that. And then we get three, close them, boom, that's eight pi over three. Zip, zap, zoop. Negative 0.577. So equals zero, negative 0 0.577. Lovely. Cool. Awesome. I think we can move on from that. Make sure you're in the right mode. I have two hands going. Right mode. And then also, um, when you're dealing with the reciprocals, just one over. Okay. Awesome. Fantastic. Awesome sauce. Oh, I love these. These are my favorite. Favorite goes with my favorite color, green. Okay. If the terminal ray passes through negative 8, negative 15 in standard position, find the six trig functions of theta. 
Okay. First, I'm going to draw this. Negative 8, negative 15 is going to be somewhere right around here. So, boom. All right. Now, what I can do is I can create a triangle. Negative 8, negative 15. And if you remember from honors geometry, and if you had me in honors geometry and you don't remember this, I'm going to be very upset because I told you you need to remember this. It was like one of the most important things. This is an 8, 15, 17 triangle. That hypotenuse will always be positive. Always positive. Okay. Now, if you need a little refresher of your um, special right triangles, again, because I think I already did this once, we have 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25. Pause that video, jot it down if you need it. So I'm going to move away from it. Eh, I'll leave it there for now. Okay. So now what it wants is the six trig function. So we're dealing with this angle here. Okay. So, hmm. Well, my sign would just be opposite, negative 15, over hypotenuse, which is 17. Cosine of theta would be, and actually, you know what's kind of nice and easy to do? While I'm thinking of it, just flip it. Reciprocal. Cosine adjacent negative 8 over 17. So it's reciprocal secant is going to be negative 17 over 8. Doesn't matter which number has the negative. You can throw it out front. Usually it's either out front or in the numerator. Okay. Um, and then tangent is going to be negative 8 over ne or sorry, negative 15 over negative 8, which is just 15 divided by 8. It's positive. Oh, that makes sense. It's in the third quadrant, tangent and cotangent are always positive there. Wonderful. Cool. <clears throat> awesome. Let's try another one. Because sometimes these are worded a little bit different here and there. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Ooh, that one looks fun. Okay. Whoops. So we've got, uh, if sine of theta is negative 5 over 13 and theta is in the fourth quadrant, find cosine of theta. So we tell you what the sine is and where it's located. Sometimes they give you a range. If you look ahead of the next one, you get like a the domain of it, okay? Um, so I'm going to draw it. That's a vibrant color right there. Um, and I've got negative 5, my opposite, my hypotenuse, and we know this is a 5, 12, 13 triangle. And this does extend on through, technically speaking, but we're really just focused on that triangle. I don't want to cover up that negative. Whoop, there we go. Okay. So, <clears throat> I'm not even going to have that. I take it back. Okay, we're going to leave it like the triangle. Focus on the triangle. Um, we want to just find cosine of theta. Well, cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. 12 over 13. And it does check out. Cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant, if I do remember correctly. ASTC. So, the C is our cosine that's positive, right? Look at that, I can take up the entire like circle. All right. Um, okay, cool. Next one. Ooh. That's not a triple right there. Whatevs, whatevs. So cosine is negative four over nine and it's between pi and two pi, which means it's somewhere, I'll change colors here so we don't get, you know, I don't wanna get stale. Um, I'm gonna go with purple. Um, so if I draw this out, I said it was in the in either quadrant three or four, right? Well, where is cosine going to be negative? That's going to be in the third quadrant. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my triangle over here. Uh, it is adjacent over hypotenuse. I don't know my third side. I got to do Pythagorean theorem. Like I'm upset about that. I love Pythagorean theorem. So I got negative four squared plus something squared. I'll call it, since it's going to be my Y, I'll call it Y squared equals nine squared, right? Because that's going to be my up and down component here. So I've got 16, 81, and I end up with, uh, what is it? Subtract 16, Y squared equals 65. And if I'm not mistaken, if I take the square root on both sides, uh, that's going to be like five and 13. Yeah. And that's not, I'm not going to get any pairs. So we have square root of 65, but 
since it is going down, yelling timber. Great song. Um, I would be negative 65. And now I'm ready to find sine, which is opposite with negative 65, square root of 65, over the hypotenuse of 9, and finding, so this one's good, and finding cotangent. That's going to be adjacent over opposite, Trisha Cow, um, negative 4 over negative square root of 65. So that will turn positive, right? But I do need to rationalize. And I'm going to end up with uh, 4 root 65 divided by 65. And if you could um, simplify, you would. But this one you cannot simplify. So we are donezo with this one. Last one here. Last one. I know. It's always sad when the video is about to end. I get the same feeling, children. I get the same feeling. It's, man, it's so fun. Especially Trig. Getting triggy with it. Na, 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 na. Na 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 na. I believe that was a Will Smith song. Mm -hmm. Will Smith getting tricky with it. Um, given the cosecant of theta is equal to six, cosine is less than zero, meaning cosine is negative. Find the remaining trig functions. Okay. Well, if cosine is negative, um, that means it's in quadrant two or three, since it, all of them are in quadrant one. They're positive, and cosine is positive in quadrant four. That leaves two and three. So I know I'm in um, either the second or the third quadrant. Now, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So it follows suit with the sine function as its positive or negative aspects, right? Um, well, it's going to be positive in the second quadrant then because sine is positive in the second quadrant. So I can draw <clears throat> my triangle like this. Now, it's going to be... Um, Hypotenuse over opposite. I don't like the uh, drawing of my triangle. I'm going to draw it more like this. Six. What's my missing side? Well, my opposite is going to be one because that's like six over one. And once again, I'm left with a Pythagorean theorem situation. One squared plus, we'll call it x squared, equals six squared. So x squared is equal to 30. Oops. One plus x squared is equal to 36. x squared equals 35. Square root on both sides. And I get, well, the square root of 35, again, we're square rooting and solving. You do have to consider the plus or minus, right, aspect if we were actually, like, solving and doing all that stuff. But really, um, hi, Jenny. Yes, I know you want to go. Jenny's whining right now. She's done with math. We're on the last problem, Jenny. We're on the last problem, I promise. Um, we're only dealing with the negative on this one because it's going to the left, right? So there's different times where we use the different uh, signs there, Um we, when we're talking length, we're usually talking positive, but because this is going to the left and we're talking about on an XY coordinate plane, that's going to be negative square root of 35. Dope. All right. I don't want you to forget that like when you square root, solve using square roots, you get a plus or minus. Don't forget that. We're using, we're using negative square root of 35 here. The rest of them, well, um, so sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. We already had cosecant. Cosine of theta is going to be adjacent. It's a tough to read three there. There we go. <clears throat> adjacent over hypotenuse. So that means that my secant is uh, negative six over the square root of thirty-five. Ooh, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to rationalize that one, right? So I'm going to get multiplied by square root of thirty-five divided by square root of thirty-five. Some of these, you're going to see such like a common pattern that you're like, I don't need to write down the square root of 35 over square root of 35. Always good to show your work, but you might get uh, pretty comfortable with it where you don't need to. There we go, over 35. So that's my secant of theta. Then we got um, <clears throat> tangent of theta would be opposite over adjacent. So this would end up being um, square root of 35 over 35, right? Negative still. That equals in the negative looks a little funky. There we go. And again, we got that by doing the square root of 35 over square root of 35. I went crazy on that one. I did it without work. But then I felt the need to go show my work. I, I apologize. And then the last one, um, I would rather not... Here's what I mean by like when you're using sometimes the unit circle, you have to like re 
um, rationalize and then simplify. If I just look at my, my triangle here, I know it's negative root 35 over one. So cotangent is negative square root of 35 divided by one, which is just negative square root of 35. So there they all are. Whew. Good stuff. All right. I should have circled tangent with that. What am I thinking? What am I thinking? Tangent wants to join the party. There we go. And cotangent. What am I thinking? My goodness, Mr. Allen. I'm all over the place. I'm so sorry. Just so excited about the math, you know? All righty, guys. That was awesome. Thank you so much for sticking around and uh, doing some fun tricky trig with us. Getting tricky with it, as Will Smith said in his song, his hit. His hit from the early 2000s, maybe, I think. Uh, if I do remember correctly. Uh, well, you guys have a wonderful day. America Freedom, Rock and Roll, Costco, and River Dog Jenny on the Gram. Deuces.